Price is right, Pricing Game Recap may contain profanity toward the contestants' decision-making in Pricing Inc. that can be categorized as either stupid or being misled by the audience that's portrayed as a heel for entertainment purposes only. In reality, Mr. Horgan doesn't show any prejudice toward the contestants based on their gender, their ethnicity, and their intelligence. Viewer discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the fabulous Price is Right Pricing Game Recap for Thursday, the 7th of February, 2013. Here are the pricing games that were played today. Money Game, One Right Price, Plinko, Coming or Going, Pocket Change, and Swap Meet. Edison, as in Thomas Edison, and also the name of a town here in my home state of New Jersey, which I believe is the home of Sports Guy 528, Edison, New Jersey. Uh, Edison is from Dallas, Texas. He was the first contestant. He played Money Game for a chance to win a 2013 Hyundai Sonata GLS modeled by the awesome Amber Lancaster. The middle number, Drew revealed, was zero. Edison first chose 22, and behind it was the front of the car. His second pick was 85, as he was listening to his wife. Behind it was a dollar sign. Third pick, he chose 79. Behind it was another dollar sign, as he listened to his wife once again. He was now up to $164. Next, he chose 90. Behind 90 was another dollar sign. He was up to $254, and he was down to his last chance. He went with 65, as I believe there were chance of the audience for that number. So, Edison went with 65. And when Drew revealed what was behind the number 65, it was... The back of the car! He got it! Actual retail price, $22,065. Plus he won the $254 in the mistake column, giving him a total in cash and car of $22,000. $319. Nice way to start off the show. Diana P. was the second contestant. She played one right price for a chance to win these two prizes. A 46-inch Samsung 3D LED HD Smart TV that comes with Smart TV technology along with two pairs of 3D glasses included. That was modeled by the ravishing Rachel Reynolds. I'd like to point out that Rachel was not showing her baby bump in today's episode as it was taped back on July 9, 2012. So I didn't say the ravishing and pregnant Rachel Reynolds. But she currently still is pregnant. And a side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer that has a that has 25.4 cubic feet of space and an indoor ice dispensing system modeled by Amber. The one right price of $2,459 was brought out by the gorgeous Gwendolyn Osborne Smith, who at the time was showing a baby bump. Now before I go any further, I just want to give myself the losing horns for failing to mention the Smith part of Gwendolyn's last name. I just called her the gorgeous Gwendolyn Osborne the, in the past couple of recaps, but I need to realize she is married. Alright, so, Diana P. believed that the price of $2,459 went over to the refrigerator. And I was thinking that myself, because to me, I think the TV was a little too obvious. 
And when Gwendolyn placed the $2,459 price onto that refrigerator, she revealed its actual retail price, and it was... $1,740. She should have chose the smart TV over by Rachel. And you know what? Diana P. also said that she felt it was the TV. What a shame. Jody was the third contestant. She played Plinko for a chance to win up to $50,000. Rachel modeled the four small prizes, the first in which was a polka dot towel with matching bag. Uh, Jody believed that six was the second number and not two being the first number. Rachel revealed the price to be $24. Should have chose the two. Very familiar price. Next we had a two gigabyte clip on I Apple iPod Shuffle. Jody believed nine was the second number, not eight being the first number. Rachel revealed the price to be $49. She got herself a Planko chip to go along with the one she got for free in the beginning. Next we had a water powered clock and she believed one was the first number, not seven being the second number. Rachel revealed the price to be $19. She got another Plinko chip. And finally we had a cake pop maker that has a nonstick baking plate and baking plate, excuse me, and bakes six mini cakes at a time. She believed that zero was the second number, not four being the first number. Rachel revealed the price to be $20. So she won three out of four Plinko chips with four chips total. Gwendolyn brought the chips over to Jody. Jody's first chip, after she climbed up the stairs and dropped the chip, landed in $1,000. The second chip, it landed in zero. The third chip landed in another zero. So now she was down to her fourth and final chip. When she dropped it, it came coming down to the columns. And where did it land in, you ask? Well, it landed in... Well, it didn't have a zero in it. That was the bad news. The good news was it had three other zeros to go along with that lone zero, meaning four zeros, which meant she landed in the $10,000 spot giving her a total of $11,000. And that goes down as an actual win. Whew. All right, Henry, a youth pastor from Redlands, California, was the fourth contestant. He played coming or going for a chance to win a trip to New Orleans, Louisiana, which was the home of Super Bowl 47. That includes a six-night stay in a deluxe king room at the Bourbon Orleans Hotel, plus a visit down to the Antebellum South to go to two plantations, modeled by Gwendolyn. Uh, Henry believed that the price of the trip was the going price of $6,518, over the coming price of 8156 So, when Gwendolyn revealed the actual retail price of the trip to New Orleans, it was... 6518 Henry is on his way down to the Big Easy. I wonder if he actually went to the Super Bowl back on Sunday. Would be something if he did. Thing. All right, Diana S. from Delaware was the fifth contestant. She played pocket change for a chance to win a Mini Cooper hardtop 
Mauled by Rachel. Now, she was given 25 cents to start off, and the first number in the price of the car was 2. Now, for the second number, between the numbers 0, 1, 5, 8, and 3, Diana S. First Belief 3 was the second number, and I was thinking 3 myself. Now, was 3 the second number? No, it was not. Rachel rose the price of the car 25 cents for 50 cents now. Next, Diana chose 8. Was 8 the second number? Mm -mm, no, it was not. Rachel rose the price up another 25 cents. Now it was 75 cents for the car. Next, Diana believed 1 was the second number. Was 1 the second number? Yes, it was, and she got another envelope. Actually, her first envelope. Uh, for the third number, she believed that it was 8. Was 8 the third number? Yes, it was. So she got another envelope right there. For the fourth number, she believed that it was 5. Was 5 the fourth number? No, it was not. So Rachel rose the price up another 25 cents. It was now a dollar. She now believed 3 was the fourth number. Was 3 the fourth number? It was. So she got another envelope. And coming down to the numbers 5 and 0, Diana asked believe 5 was the last number. Was 5 the last number? No, it was not. Rachel rose the price up another 25 cents for a total of $1.25. And obviously 0 was the last number, and eventually Diana S. picked it. Of course, she was right. So the price of that car went up 25 cents four times, giving her $1.25 for the price of the car. She needed to get a dollar more to win. Now, starting off with that 25 cents, the first envelope contained 25 cents. She's now up to 50 cents. Second envelope contained 50 cents. She was now up to a dollar. She only needed a quarter more to win the car. For the third envelope, Drew told Diana as some bad news. What was that bad news, you ask? She had to pay taxes on a brand new car because the third envelope had 25 cents, giving her exactly $1.25, and she won the car! We really didn't see what the fourth envelope contained, but it didn't matter. Diana S. won the Mini Cooper Hardtop. Yeah! All right, Gloria from Mobile, Alabama was the sixth and final contestant. She played Swap Meet for a chance to win these four prizes. First, we had a Jura Impressa C5 automatic espresso machine slash pop maker that grinds, tamps, brews, and self-cleans in less than a minute. And that was modeled by Rachel. Along with 14 karat gold, 8 piece handmade designer jewelry that has two necklaces, three bracelets, three pairs of earrings with colorful gemstones. Hand modeled by Amber. A Brunswick V-Force Air Hockey Table that has electronic scoring and sound, durable aluminum rails, scuff proof playing surface, and exceptionally fast play. Modeled by Amber and Gwendolyn in a duel of air hockey. And a Honda CRF 70F off-road motorcycle that is lightweight and has a three-speed semi-automatic transmission modeled by Gwendolyn. Gloria swapped the coffee maker for the air hockey table. Gwendolyn revealed the price of the air hockey table, and it was 
$999. So if that espresso machine slash coffee maker was $999, Gloria would win all four prizes. And when Rachel revealed what the price of the coffee maker from Jura was, it turned out to be... $999! Gloria won all four prizes! We didn't get to see what the prices of the jewelry and the motorcycle were respectively, but didn't matter. Gloria became a winner! Now on to the acknowledgement. According to Ben Mason, there were two, count them, two Dianas in the same show today. The funny thing is, after Diana Peston played One Right Price, the second Diana, Diana Swinson, was the very next contestant called to come on down. He's not joking. This actually happened. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been even stranger if both Dianas ended up in the showcase? That would have been very interesting. We had a contestant named Catherine Street, who was called to come on down for the fourth one-bid round. There's an actual street in Ottawa, Ontario, that's Ben Mason Nation's capital, named Catherine Street. That's the street where you'll find Ottawa Central Station. He's not joking. Look it up. As if it weren't enough, we had a Catherine that he was just mentioning, and someone else with a similar name. Katharina Prisuta. First we have two Dianas and now two Catherines? Wow! Is this the Price is Right or the name game? We live in a very small world, I must say. <laughs> now, here's an acknowledgement from the Orox 87. Today in the showcase, we saw a Dodge Caliber. This goes to show you how long ago this episode was taped. The following is from Wikipedia. The 2011 Caliber model ended production on November 23, 2011 in the United States, with the remainder being sold at the, as the 2012 model year Caliber in both U.S. and Canada. A successor called the Dart, which we have seen on the show before, went on sale in June 2012, as the compact vehicle in Dodge's line. The Caliber will continue production alongside its replacement, the all-new Dodge Dart, for rental car fleets nationwide until at least early 2013, with those models being offered as 2012 models. Those Calibers, however, will not be offered to consumers. And according to I-264 shirt, four times someone fails to get the wheel around. Is that a record for a single show? I believe it is. A little surprised that Ben Mason didn't acknowledge that, but oh well. So we had a really good show today, folks. We had four pricing games won. They were Money Game, Coming or Going, Pocket Change, and Swap Me. And we gave away a total of $12,254. Edison won $254 in money game. Diana P. won $1,000 in the first showcase showdown. I like how she, like, wound up the wheel before she spun it fully. I think something similar was done in the second half, in the second showcase showdown. And, um, Jody won $11,000 in Plinko. So all of today's contestants, uh, have titles. For Edison, Jody, Henry, Diana, S, and Gloria, they're the MVPs of The Price is Right. But I got special names for them. Edison is the Adrian Hamilton of The Price is Right. Jody is the Reggie Stevens of The Price is Right. Henry is the Tommy Streeter of The Price is Right. Diana S. is the Arthur Jones of The Price is Right. And Gloria is the Gino Gretkowski of The Price is Right. And I am naming Diana P. the Contestant Recognition Contestant for not only winning $1,000 in the first Showcase Showdown, but she also won her Showcase. 
But a special name for her is the Asa Jackson of The Price is Right. All the names I just referenced here are from the Baltimore Ravens, who are the Super Bowl 47 champions. Now, Diana P. won the following in her showcase. She won a trip to Houston, Texas that includes a six-night stay in an executive suite, including daily breakfast, two signature spa treatments at Trellis the Spa, at the Houstonian Hotel Club and Spa, located in the Galleria shopping area. She also won a trip to London, England that includes a six-night stay at a five-star hotel in London's Knightbridge area, plus an afternoon tea at Harrods, Harrods, and a trip to Hong Kong that includes a six-night stay in a one-class hotel at the Kowloon District, plus $3,000 in spending cash. All of the prizes in that showcase were modeled by Amber. So. In actuality, including that $3,000 in the showcase, we actually gave away today a grand total of $15,254. Well, I think it's only fair to give myself the losing horns for leaving out $3,000 in cash won in the showcase. So yeah, once again, $15,254 in cash was given away today. Now, going back to Diana Peace Showcase, she bid $32,300. The actual retail price, $33,598 for a difference of $1,298. A pretty good bid, I must say. Although I thought she was over, but no, she was not. Diana P. won a grand total in cash and prizes of $35,577. Promotional consideration for the Price is Right pricing game recap this week is provided by Jeopardy, America's favorite quiz show. Available for the PS3, rated E for everyone. So, as we come to the end of the week for tomorrow, I'd like to mention that if bonus game does get played, Martin S5-1989 will most likely not be able to do the recap because there is a blizzard coming, coming my way in the east area where not only where I live, but Sports Guy 528 lives in the east area, and so does J Van Diesel and Money 7373, and Fresh Treaty 92, who also lives in the east. I believe he lives in New York. Um, yeah, this, this, this is a big blizzard coming our way. So, Martin S5 1989 informed me that if bonus game gets played, he may, he more than likely may not be able to watch the prices right on his TV because his uh, local CBS affiliate, WBZ TV, will more than likely have reports for the blizzard. But you know, there's always CBS.com. But if bonus game doesn't get played tomorrow, but if, like, Golden Road gets played, I'm 264 shirt will have the recap. So we'll find out who will do the recap tomorrow, depending on what price you need to play. Until then, this is Mr. Horgan reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Good night, everyone.